Hello, welcome to another MP3 tutorial, and here we're going to be discussing part 4 of the uh, menstrual cycle. Just want to show you some quick questions so you can kind of have an idea of what um, questions would look like on an exam in the college level. And this is basic biological sciences, advanced levels are a lot harder and trickier than this. Uh, let's see, um, we have chapters 46 and 45. Okay, um, by now with the endocrine system, you should already know the answer to number 1 right here. Answer is A. Um, we should also know the answer to number two. Uh, answer looks like that is A as well. Anyway, let's just keep going. Let's go over the things that have to do with the menstrual cycle. Um, let's go. A hormone not derived from cholesterol. Uh, this, I guess, is estradiol, progesterone, testosterone. You should already know that a lot of this hormones right here, those are all. Um, steroid hormones, epinephrine is the only one that's correct in this answer to that. It's not a steroid. Okay, number four. This has to do with what we're talking about. Okay, number four. A woman undergoing menopause will have an increase in each of the following hormones. Remember, menopause is when there is little responsiveness of follicles um, to FSH and LH. Do you remember when what FSH and LH do? FSH and LH stimulate the growth of a follicle. LH rises, which stimulates, which triggers the follicle to rupture, leading to ovulation, which ovulation is a release of the uh, of the ovum from the ovary into the abdominal cavity. There's a decreased responsiveness. Times the corpus luteum. It's not, well, that means most follicles are not being stimulated, or most of them are not going to ovulation, which means there's a little production of progesterone. So you know this cannot be the answer. There's a there's decreased production, production of progesterone, and you know progesterone inhibits the hypothalamus from producing FSH. So if progesterone is not there to block the hypothalamus, that means FSH and LH have constant blood. So if they say so a woman undergoing menopause will have an increase in each of the following hormones, the answer is D. It's going to be D right there. Okay, let's go to the next one. I like this uh, question number five. Let's see. A woman, a hormone in pregnant women produced in large amounts and excreting urine. Actually, home pregnancy tests are designed to detect the presence of this hormone. The answer is going to be, you know, it's not FSH. You cannot detect FSH. Uh, it's not estrogen, it's not progesterone, it's HCG. Human cryonic gonadotropic hormone. Uh, that's produced excessively, it is excreted in the urine, and that's what most home tests are designed to test. So, the cause of uh, morning sickness. Let's go. Okay, number six, no. Uh, and seven, you should know the answers to all of this, but I'm just skipping them. And you can find them on our website. Let's go to number eight. Uh, eight and nine, let's do those last two. Number eight, at what, at which two points of the menstrual cycle are the levels of estrogen highest? At which two points of the menstrual cycle are the levels of estrogen highest? Uh, I'll just give you a few seconds to think about it. And think about it. Estrogen is being stimulated right when FSH and LH are being stimulated. And also, estrogen rises when progesterone rises because it has been created by the corpus luteum. So, now is that going to be before or after ovulation? At ovulation, during menstrual flow, flow, during menstrual flow and pregnancy, during pregnancy and after menopause. And you know it's not menopause because we just have been singing like a song that menopause is a decreased production of progesterone and estrogen. Or well, due to more decreased sensitivity or less, less uh, responsiveness of follicles. After thinking that, it's going to be A. And if you're not sure why the answer is A, then just go back to our charts. I know this is a lot of information. But right before ovulation, there's rising estrogen, 
which triggers the rise in LH, which triggers ovulation. And after ovulation, the corpus luteum, there's a rise in estrogen and progesterone. So, number nine, and we're going to stop here for this part four. Number nine. Um, a woman who is 17 weeks pregnant was told by her physician that she was pregnant during her last menstrual period. Uh, there was already implantation of the fetal organ. Hence, she is 19 weeks and not 17 weeks as she thought. Which of the following best supports the doctor's conclusion? So, the only way, remember, progesterone develops and maintains the endometrium lining. So, if you do not have enough progesterone, the endometrium lining will not be as developed or as maintained, even if implantation occurs. So, usually, women that have a progesterone deficiency by nature would have longer menstrual periods, longer menstrual cycles, or would have, I'm sorry, no, I wasn't. Or would in this case have a menstrual cycle even after um, in um, fertilization. The reason is because progesterone helps in the development and maintenance of the endometrium lining. The only difference is this menstrual period here is not going to be as long. But the reason why she's 17, or why she's 19 and not 17 as she thought, is because generally we may count that for a week or two. And there's a lot of discrepancies. So the reason for this question right here is not the best of questions for that. But it kind of gives you an idea of, um, it gives you enough information to get the right answer from the stresses. And if you've already gotten the right answer, you know B is the right answer. That is the right answer. It is B. It has to be most likely a progesterone deficiency. But to actually diagnose this, you need more information. Um, but yeah, so again, if none of this makes sense, just go back to our video, our part one, part two, and part three. And I'll explain everything. And go on our website. We have this, um, these questions are on there. They're actually have it up there for free for all of you guys under Biology 1442. Uh, thank you very much. And have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye.